I developed this recipe as a plating element or garnish with steaks and other meat in a restaurant. You can't rightfully call this a vegetable side dish because it's too intense and rich, but it makes a very memorable element among a complex composition on a plate. Despite the numerous ingredients that go into this, most guests will only taste cauliflower, but it'll be the most delicious cauliflower they've ever had in their life. Even children who hate cauliflower love this. I'm going to be using orange cauliflower for this. Uh, this is not a genetically modified organism, by the way. This was uh, discovered in Canada a while back uh, as growing, and, and they just um, propagated it and, and kept it as a, as a regular species. It, the only reason it's orange is it has more, more beta carotene, and it. it's the same, um, same thing that makes carrots orange. But uh, like I said, you can use plain uh, you want to break these up into large florets. This one's just a little bit too large, so I'll cut it in half. You want to end up with pieces that are, you know, reasonable size, but definitely not a bunch of little small crumbs. When you, when you, in case you don't know how to do this, get rid of the stems. You just take a knife like this and and cut around the base. And then start breaking it off gently like this. I've got a pot of water here with a steamer basket in it. I'm going to load this in. The only tricky part of this whole recipe really is steaming the broccoli, I mean <laughs> steaming the cauliflower the right amount because it's going to be cooked a total of three times and if you don't steam it enough in the first time it still won't be tender by the end and if you steam it too much, it'll be soft and squishy, and nobody will like that. So you have to you have to watch this, and it'll vary a little bit from cauliflower to cauliflower that you get. Even okay, and I've moved it off to a bowl. <clears throat> I'm not going to put this in an ice bath because I don't want to introduce any more water to it. I want to just let it let it cool down the way it is and uh, we'll come back to it in just a few minutes after we make the sauce. Okay, now we've got two separate pans going at the same time. One of them's got the flour and the butter in it that we're going to make the roux with, and the other one is going to be uh, cooking the onions and then later the broth. And then a couple minutes later we've got the, the roux cooking away, and over here we've got the onions started. Notice I can use large pieces. Again, this is, this is on purpose. You're going to um, put some baking soda on these now. Just a little bit. This is not baking powder. It's not salt. And I don't know how much that actually was. Maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. <laughs> Just a little bit. This is a catalyst in this case. And you'll notice that almost instantly, within, within a matter of a minute, you'll see the onions turn much more yellow. And these are gonna these are gonna really caramelize and get very sweet in no time at all now. And your onions within about five minutes are going to turn into this kind of orangish brown goop. You're gonna have to watch to make sure that they don't burn. This is because of the baking soda. This is a one of those tricks from molecular gastronomy. It's almost ready. Okay, when you're satisfied that you've got some really good brown tones in here. I'm going to add the chicken stock to this. And let this start simmering. Meanwhile, don't forget about the roux. Keep stirring this. Keep an eye on it. It's, uh, it's almost there. It's hard to tell because this camera is so poor for its color renditions, but uh, it's Meanwhile, the other pan has just been reduced to a simmer. After you've added the chicken stock, you can add a teaspoon of sherry wine vinegar. And half a teaspoon of ground cumin.
half a teaspoon white pepper. And if you like, you can add a little cayenne, but you don't have to. You can add a little bit if you like. It's spicy, but it's, it's good this way. Pretty well. <coughs> you can see the special milk has begun to thicken up. We're going to convert it into a Mornay by adding the cheese. I'm using Kastromskoy. You won't be able to get that. You can use Monterey Jack. With a few lumps at the end, it's okay. This isn't uh, going to be a final sauce, don't forget. We're combining this with other things. We'll give this a minute first for the cheese to dissolve. Now we're going to add the contents of the onions. Spice and all that to this pan. Scrape it out with a spit. Okay, after you've combined the, the stock and the onions <coughs> with the Mornay sauce, Add a little um, thyme, and you know, hit it with a hit it with a stick blender to make sure there's no particles of onions left. They want it completely smooth. Okay, now we're going to continue cooking this for another few minutes. Reduce it a little bit more. Onions, Mornay sauce, and cool off enough so it's thickened up some. This is important. If you try to do it while it's still too hot. It'll be too thin. It'll just run all over the cauliflower. So you better let it cool and thicken. Stir it gently so that you don't break up the cauliflower. You want to keep the pieces as large as possible. But you still want to coat this evenly too. This is what it looks like before it goes in the oven. Now it's about to be roasted. Okay, after you've um, taken it out of the oven and let it cool for just a couple of minutes, then you need to move it around on the pan, put it back in the oven at the lower heat setting, continue cooking it. Then after 15 minutes, you transfer it to a plastic container in a single layer, use a large plastic container and refrigerate it. Into a bowl, <coughs> I've got uh, 45 grams of flour. I'm going to put a tablespoon of salt. It seems like a lot of salt, but don't forget, not very much of this is going to stick to it, and then it's going to go in a fryer, or it's going to get washed off into the fryer too. So, tablespoon of salt for 45 grams. Then, <coughs> is it ready to fry each piece? Just give it a little bath in here before it hits the deep fryer. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.